to see all of you. Um, I'd like to welcome you to worship this morning. Um, announcements. Um, you of course, will be reading your bulletin um, for announce for um, activities going on. You can see the birthdays and anniversaries on the calendar. Um, oh, I see next Friday. David Nieder is not here. I don't see him, but his birthday is Friday. So if you could send him a card or call him, I'm sure he would love that. Do we have any other announcements anyone would like to make? Okay, then um, let's take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. Thank you. 
follow you without counting the cost. But our tanks are running empty, and we are afraid we can't go the distance. We are hidden in the crowd, ignoring Christ's call to pick up our cross and follow him. We have hidden stories to tell ourselves that we will attend to a spiritual walk on Sunday, just not this day. Help us assess our motives and intentions, even as we ponder our needs over the journey. For only then will we know if we have what it takes to finish the course in faith. Amen. When we fall short in life, God puts us on the potter's wheel and fashions us into vessels, into, into vessels fit for the kingdom. This journey of transformation is really pleasant, but it's necessary for us to be made new and whole. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. Okay, I also did not make this. 
Um, okay, now feel that. How's it feel? Light. 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 Okay, because someone else made this one. And it's like thin and it's beautifully glazed. And what is this? What is this used for? Is this a vase? What is it? It's a bowl, right? Bowl. Made out of the same, made out of the same clay, right? But just shaped a little differently. And so what would happen if all three of these pieces of pottery were exactly the same? Let's say they're all bowls. What am I gonna do when I have a flower that I want a vase for? Wouldn't be good, would it? You know? Or if they were all shaped like this, I could use this as a base maybe, but it wouldn't be a very good bowl, right? So we so this is similar to what we're talking about today. So God made all of us in various in a, with a plan. And um, sometimes we don't know what that plan is, right? But um, we're different shapes and sizes, and we have different gifts and different talents so that we can all work together and get everything accomplished and do his, his ministry out in the world, right? And we may not be perfect, like my heavy base here, but... Um, we don't have to be perfect. We just have to try to do better all the time, right? And live life the way that God wants us to, right? By helping people and loving people and um, and following his laws and um, reading the Bible and praying and all those good things. So um, we're going to keep talking about being a potter. And so um, should we say prayer? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank goodness that you have a plan for us and you have created us in a certain way for a specific purpose or purposes. Um, thank you for Pinky. Thank you for um, bringing us all here today. And um, just help us to trust you and know that you have a plan for us and a purpose for us and that you have created us um, in a specific way. Um, and it's all part of the great plan. And we love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.
just take this as a token of her love. Um, love for you, Lord. Amen.
and that your grace will be sufficient for all of what we need. You are faithful and we thank you. Lord, we pray for those that are struggling with family and family relationship, difficulties that are heartbreaking for those struggling with physical sickness and disease. Lord, you know just how to minister the word of hope that they needed to hear. We pray for healing and restoration unto them in Jesus' name. I pray for each and everyone who has come to worship you today. May your blessings and presence be with us. Lord, cover us all with your precious blood and fill us with your grace. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah 18, 1 through 11. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord, Come, go down to the potter's house, and there I will let lend you my ear, I'm sorry, I will let you hear my words. So I went down to the potter's house, and there he was working at his wheel. The vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hand, and he reworked it into another vessel, as seemed good to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Can I not do with you, O house of Israel, just as the potter has done, says the Lord? Just like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. At one moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pick it up and break it down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment, I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now all from your evil ways and amend your ways and your doings. Now, please stand for the reading of the New Testament, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 25 through 33. Now, large clouds, crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king? going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you may become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. And you may be seated.
blessed Sunday, my brothers and sisters in the Lord. There were times in my life when I hear my mentors <coughs> telling me, Well, it's not easy to be a Christian, especially a pastor. And they look at me. And then, indeed, I agree with them. It is not easy to walk a Christian life because a lot of temptations come on our way. And God demands a commitment from us. It, it is not easy to be a Christian. What do you think? Do you agree? Yes. Jesus on our text today was followed by multitudes of people. They have their own reason for following Him. And Jesus knew their very reason why they were there. And so, he issues this condition to them. If you want to follow me and be my disciples, hate your family, carry your cross. Now for you, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, what is your reason for following Jesus? Is it so that you find blessings, prosperity, to find peace, to find to find peace, to find contentment, to find healing, to find meaning in your life? So that when we die, we go to heaven and not to hell. What is your reason for following Jesus? I know each of us has our reason for following Jesus. One of our reasons for following Jesus, if we are His disciples, should be so that we are assured that our soul will be with Jesus when we die. In Mark chapter 8 verses 34 through 37, And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? In this text, we see that Jesus is telling those who wish, wish to follow him to deny themselves and carry their cross. In our text today, found in Luke, Jesus tells the people, hate your family and carry your cross. That is tough. Hate your family and carry your cross. Is Jesus really telling you and me to hate our parents? our sisters, brothers, and our children? If Jesus is telling us to hate our family, then why did He give us the fifth commandment? Fifth commandment says, Honor your father and mother. The book of Proverbs tells us to listen to our parents. And Ephesians 6 
honor your parents, honor your parents, and you will have long life. Is Jesus really telling us to hate our parents? Commentary says that this word hate goes back to an Aramic word meaning to love less. Loveless. So if we, so if we change the wordings and put the original meaning, it would be read like this. If anyone comes to me and does not loveless his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. Jesus demanded a primary and undivided allegiance of those who commit to follow him. Jesus was not despising family ties. Jesus loved his mother, even gave his mother into the care of another beloved disciple when he was dying. What Jesus wanted to say when he said this was, if you love your family and your life more than me, then you are not fit to be my disciple. Do you fit on the description of who a disciple is? Do you fit on the description of who a disciple is? You alone can answer that. I don't know how much commitment you have to the Lord, but right now, our text tells us that Jesus wants our undivided allegiance if we, if we say we want to follow and be His disciples. Love bless your family. They should be your priority next to me, says Jesus. Another condition that Jesus is pointing out to the people is carry your cross. Before Jesus' crucifixion, the cross was a symbol of a curse. After Jesus' crucifixion, it was a symbol of God's love toward mankind. Jesus saying this to the multitudes following him meant that they must crucify their desires when these desires clash with the demand of Christ. Furthermore, Jesus was telling them to accept crucifixion at the hands of the world. Historian, historians tells us that when the gospel were written, the early church was under persecution. They lost not just money, but even their very lives. So, if you become a follower of Jesus, carry your cross. And I see a stark difference, stark difference when we invite people to church. We say, if you join the church, you will find peace joy and prosperity and we skip this part carry your cross if you follow Jesus sometimes I think this is where we pay we open focus too much, too much on the grace but what about that which is demanded of us what about our part as his followers? We often are afraid to stand for the truth. We are often afraid to stand by the word of God. And for this reason, Jesus goes to say the parable of the tower builder and the king preparing for war. When one builds 
we must know the cause of building. If one goes to war, one must know what to prepare for. Jesus in our text today calls the hearers to a life of discipleship. And he tells them to count the cost too. There is always a cost when we decide to do something. Jesus is telling us in our text this morning that if you plan to build a tower, wouldn't you first sit down and estimate the cost? If you plan to win a war against an enemy, wouldn't you estimate how much soldiers, soldiers and weapons you have? And if you cannot win the war, the only wise decision is to negotiate. There is a cause in all things that we do. Are you ready to give whatever that may cause you to follow Jesus? As your pastor, it is always a struggle, especially in a culture where we should be considerate and not offending to everyone. We want everyone to be pleased. But this text reminds me as your pastor that whatever we do or say, someone or somebody will be offended. Especially when we talk about our beliefs as Christians. Not anybody will agree to what we believe. If we go back to the time of the disciples, they were offending a lot of people because of the gospel that they preached. They were persecuted, attacked, disliked, and punished. Many were killed for their belief. Our text today reminds us that none of us can be Jesus' disciple when we don't want to carry our cross. Now, let me remind you that these are not my words. These are Jesus' words. Give up whatever is there that you haven't given up to the Lord. Give it up and put God first before that. What is your cross that Jesus wants you to carry? What is your cross that Jesus wants you to carry? In answering this question, I am reminded of one of the sermons preached by the president of our seminary in my freshman year. Carry your cross. And yes, I need to carry my wife. In my life as a pastor, my wife had been my cross. He said, well, he was smiling and beaming. His wife was listening to his sermon too. Is your wife your cross? Is your husband your cross? Husband and wife should carry each other. They are to help each other. We have different crosses that we carry. Let us carry it and let us let us carry it and serve. Stay committed to Jesus. Let us carry your let us carry our cross to glorify God. Carry your cross means denying yourself of worldly and fleshly desires to glorify God. Going back to counting the cost of following Jesus. Give up things that is not giving glory to God. The cost for us is to put God first and carry our cross. May we have the courage to respond. God bless us all. Amen.
Christ our Lord, in vitally stable, all who love Him and seek to grow in His likeness. Let us grow near with faith, make our humble confession, and prepare to receive this holy sacrament. People, we do not presume to come to this table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own goodness, and in our own failing mercies. We are not worthy that you should receive us, but give the word, and we shall be healed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was a sincere prayer and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And they are not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For now is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. He came, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for us. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, pour out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
most long people uh, we give in thanks for the world of you that have created for the care of the life and for the giving of yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose whole life, suffering in her and glorious resurrection, has delivered us from the slavery to sin and shepherd, the divinity of the power of the Holy Spirit, the Bartheus in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a purpose for heaven and life. Be our good children, and yours is the Lord, now and forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For our closing hymn, let us sing of that on the way, Lord, and Jesus Christ.